so when someone comes to the office with a diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea proven by sleep study and they have failed their CPAP, what I usually will do is I'll go over their physical exam with them in the office, identifying the different layers of obstruction that they have, and I will normally bring them over here to the picture on the wall to give them a better idea what that anatomy really looks like. Obstructive sleep apnea usually is a multi-layered obstruction, meaning you have problems inside the nose, problems inside the mouth, and possibly problems in, with the neck and throat. So uh, when the first thing I do is I try to start at the top. Most patients who come in will have a deviated septum. Septum is a wall that separates your nose from left and right. Normally in a patient who has obstructive sleep apnea, that septum is very deviated, causing part of the obstruction. You also have other little tissues inside your nose, and those are called turbinates. And those turbinates can swell up, and that can also lead to part of the obstruction inside the nose. So next we go to the mouth. And then years and years of uh, mouth breathing because of the nasal obstruction will then lead to changes inside the mouth and oral cavity. What we tend to see is the roof of the mouth tends to stretch out and become longer and it hangs lower inside the mouth. And then the, ten the tongue tends, be tends to become thicker and takes up more space inside the mouth. A lot of the patients still have their tonsils. So when you get an elongated roof of the mouth, the tongue swells, and then you even have the tonsils on the side, the throat gets obstructed and closed off leaving those patients with a very small opening. So in the majority of those patients, when they come in the office, I'll just tell them to open up their mouth and say, ah, and see if I can even see the back wall of the throat. In the majority of those patients, you can't. That those chronic changes have been made over years, and again, that's another layer of the obstruction. So the last layer of obstruction is gonna be the neck. So in some patients, they're born with uh, the mandible or the jaw where it sits further back. And when it sits further back, it, it actually allows the throat to collapse in the back, and that can be the last layer of obstruction. So what we do in that area is we can uh, address a little bone that sits in the upper part of the neck, and we can help pull that forward, which then pulls the throat forward, which helps open the throat after the surgery. And so by doing that, you've now alleviated the obstruction in the nose. You'll help alleviate the, the obstruction that's inside the mouth and the back of the throat and then you help alleviate the obstruction in the neck. And there are some things that we can offer in the office to help control snoring and sleep apnea also. Those would include a turbinate reduction, which can be done in the office. Uh, we can also do mouth work too that includes uh, implants into the roof of the mouth, and we can also do some tightening of the tissue in the back of the throat to help uh, control the length of the roof of the mouth, which helps cut down on snoring and sleep apnea also.